floor is yours. Thank you, Alessandro. First of all, let me explain why I'm here, because first I am pretending to be Jason, because uh, <laughs> in point of fact, Jason had to present a, a paper, but in the last day, it told us that uh, he could have not come to this meeting. So we thought that we might have remained with the Magnificent Seven, but since we like symmetries, we thought, well, an even number of presenters is better than an odd number. And so this is why I'm giving here this talk. But second, there is a more substantive reason, that is that this paper has been prompted by what Emmanuel uh, presented last year, because uh, the idea of reflecting again on uh, Jasper John's painting came to me by listening to what he said last year. And maybe a more sensible uh, title of my presentation might have been, let me see whether I can, I see, okay. I might have called this presentation the boundary of depiction, just because in point of fact, this is a case that has been discussed by Wollheim uh, in Art and Object, uh, because object ta uh, Wallen takes that uh, uh, the case of uh, John Jasper John's paintings are uh, limited case of uh, cases of uh, perception. In particular, case like this, this painting called Flag of 1945-1955, in uh, which uh, Wallen says that tentative is not exactly something that he very definitely wants to maintain that uh, the flag paintings by Jasper Jones uh, are borderline cases of depictions because of his own theory of depiction, because for him it's clear whether they satisfy what for him is the necessary and sufficient condition in order for something to have a figurative value, and thereby the necessary condition for something to be a depiction that is a pictorial representation, namely to be grasped by a suitable spectator by means of a sui generis perceptual experience of seeing in. Why I say this is only a necessary condition? Because in order for something to really be a depiction, the relevant seeing in experience for him must also be the correct seeing in experience. That is an experience that also takes account of the fact that, the, uh, that what is experienced is the right thing to be experienced. Because it is the what conforms to the author's intention in painting the relevant painting. So, for instance, pareidolias of fortuitous images, such as the cases in which you see faces in rocks or, cloud, or animals in clouds, uh, are typical examples of something, according to Wollheim, that have a figurative value insofar as they naturally prompt something like a scene in experience. Uh, but since they are not taken as being pictures of something, uh, they're not properly speaking cases of depiction, are just natural exemption, uh, examples of things in which we see something and therefore they have a figurative value, but they are not pictures because their intentionality has not been fixed. Okay. Uh, but according to Wollheim, the reason why a flag cannot be taken to be a case of depiction is that the kind of experience that uh, one has in grasping flag is not a case of seeing in experience, so it's not a case of pareidolia. It's a sort of experience of seeing as, such as seeing such a painting as a flag, rather than an experience of seeing. And you might remember that in that paper, um, Volheim wants to criticize uh, the idea that he ascribes to uh, Gombrich of saying that the relevant experience that has to be involved in cases of pictorial perception is are cases of seen as uh, instead of cases of seen in. And volume in that paper says that the seen and experience uh, differs from a seen in experience, at least because of three reasons. First, that it must have a particular item, whereas as we will see for volume uh, seen in is an experience of a scene, that is of something that involves an individual, but an individual located in a certain surrounding. And secondly, that some part of the X that is seen as a certain item must be seen as that particular item, 
And third, perhaps the most important reason, it says that the, the seen as experience is an exclusive experience of it. It is not what Wolleim called a twofold experience, an experience that is made by two folds uh, as the seen in experience has to be. So now my plan is the following. I will basically assume that Volam is right in uh, pointing out that seen in uh, is uh, the relevant condition for figurativity on the one end and depiction on, on the other. I will just possibly discuss an objection uh, that has been raised to me on this concern. But second, I want to focus on whether Volam is right in claiming that flag is not grasped via proper seen in experience. And in fact, I will say that um, Volem is right, but by assessing the three reasons that he provided in, uh, in art and its objects on uh, the 1980 uh, book uh, on this part. And the reasons why uh, for Volem, uh, the experience that we entertain when we grasp flag is not a seen in experience is first that Flag is a painting of a particular rather than of a state of affairs. And secondly, that it is cropped to the contour of his object. That is, in it, one can only see a flag as a whole. And third, that it shares with that object most of its basic property. That is, flag counts as a flag, according to, to volume. And uh, so what I would like to uh, uh, show is that uh, volume is right in saying that uh, the relevant experience with flag is not a seen in experience, but basically because of the first two reasons, and not of the third one, which might be theoretically speaking a good reason, but not as, it, uh, as when it is applied to flag in particular. Uh, and so given what the seen in experience really amounts to, once it is taken in volume terms, no such experience really grasps flag. So I agree with the, Volem, if Volem's intentions were the following, that flag is not a depiction. It's not a picture of something. Uh, because there, uh, it cannot be uh, something that is the object of a scene in experience. But third, if I will have time, I will also claim that precisely the reasons that uh, uh, can be appealed to in order to show that flag is not a depiction allows for other paintings by Jasper Jones to be ranked as depictions, such as, for instance, three flags that, uh, uh, that Jones painted some years later in 1958, because precisely uh, they are grasped via an experience, a proper experience of seeing, and we will see why. And therefore, they are depictions in volume terms. So I think that we don't have to remind here what a, a seeing experience is for Walton. Uh, for all, I'm uh, twofold experience, two folds, the configurational fold in which what is basically grasped is the picture of vehicle, the image carrier, as Lambert was saying, uh, and the recognition of fold in which one perceptually, this is very important for, for volume, the scene that the picture presents, which for volume coincides with the picture subject. But what is very important is that for the volume, entertaining this experience amounts to entertaining a proper fusion experience, in the sense that the two faults are not merely juxtaposed, but they are interpenetrated. And this is the, uh, the reason why volume says that the two faults are not identical with the corresponding experience of the very same target taken in, iso in isolation. That is, the configuration of fault is not the same as the mere experience of a vehicle, and uh, uh, analogously, the recognition of fold is not the same as the experience, as the pictorial, as the perceptual experience of the subject taken in isolation. And this is why uh, the experience is a particular one. Now, uh, why I take it that volume's third reason, that is the fact that uh, uh, the John's painting and a flag basically share their properties, do not, does not work at least as far as flag is concerned, which is uh, volume's third reason to deny that the experience is in a case of a seen in experience. For, in general, one might say, well, a picture's vehicle and the picture's subject can be attributed identical properties. For instance, they can be attributed to what Don Lopez calls the vehicle mere surface properties, 
such as being made of a certain stuff, especially in the case of inflection, and also what he calls uh, the vehicle design properties, that is, uh, those of its surface properties that enable that very subject to be seen in the vehicle. The same colors, the same shapes, and even the same arrangements of such color and shapes. But one might remark that in point of fact, this is not enough in order to, share, to, to say that uh, uh, flag and its subject uh, share most of the properties for one might say, well, but they differ as far as their essential properties are concerned, which is what makes them items of a different kind. That is, the vehicle, uh, unlike the subject, uh, is different because the subject is ascribed to three-dimensionality. It's a 3D object, whatever it is. Uh, and it is ascribed to the fact that it is a flag. But this does not hold as far as the vehicle is concerned. For the vehicle is flat and is not a flag. One might say, well, Look, just a moment. Is it really the case that flag vehicle is not a flag? Because one can, in the proper context, one cannot distinguish it from a flag. So one might say, well, uh, why not? Uh, this is not a good reason because, you know, we well know uh, since at least Austin's Sense and Sensibilia that phenomenological instability it's not a good criterion for metaphysics, right? So it's not a good way of saying the two things uh, as things of the same kind because they might be phenomenologically identical or at most epistemologically identical, but this doesn't make the two things the same thing. So it might still be the case that even if they are indistinguishable, vehicle flag and the flag are substantially different. And in fact, one may say, maybe following what uh, uh, Michael says, that flag's vehicle is not a flag. At most, it is a painted flag, whatever this means. Something that is modified by some painting activity in a flag-wise way, uh, which means that if it had figurative value, which is what is in question, it would present a flag as its own subject. So certainly, it might be used as a flag, but if it were used as a flag, then it would no longer be a pictorial vehicle. So it remains a basic difference between the two cases. Uh, and one might say, well, look, but you are talking here of the vehicle. Maybe we have to talk of the picture as such. Flag as a picture, not merely flag as a carrier, so to speak, as a vehicle. But again, if a flag were taken as an interpreted picture, that is something that is a picture of something else, Therefore, a depiction, which is, of course, in question in these terms, it would be a picture of a flag. But again, it would not be a flag. So uh, a, a basic difference would remain. Uh, so the problem, one may say, is just concerns the particular case that Volheim has chosen. That is, there might be a real problem if, in point of fact, the vehicle and the alleged subject were truthfully attributed all the same properties, independently of whether they are accidental or essential properties. The problem is that this is not the case simply with flag. So to give you an example, for instance, consider Eve Klein's blue monochrome, which is 2D and it's completely blue, right? And one might say, well, this is, cannot be a picture of something uh, which is uh, exactly and which has exactly the same property, that is a two-dimensional blue item, because precisely the two things would collapse, that is, the, uh, the two things would have this very same property. And then, in fact, one does not see a two-dimensional blue, two blue item in a two-dimensional blue item. One merely sees a, 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 a two-dimensional. Uh, two this is the case. One cannot see that. Uh, do you see a, a blue two-dimensional item in a two in a blue two-dimensional item? No, I simply see a two-dimensional item, and that's it. So, if this were the case with flag, one might say, "Well, this is a good reason as to why we have to rule out flag as a possible case uh, of uh, of uh, target of a scene in experience." But as we have seen, there are reasons to say that flag, on the one hand, and its alleged subject do not share at least some of their properties. They might share some properties. This is not a problem. So there might be cases in which uh, even some partially essential properties might be shared 
both by the vehicle and by the subject, and this would not prevent the object we face from being grasped by a scene in experience. So it's not a problem of accidentality versus essentiality. It's the fact that the two things do not share all the properties. For, there are cases in which uh, there might be a sort of partial coincidence between the properties that are possessed by the vehicle and the properties that are possessed by its subject. For instance, this is the case of pareidolias, in which uh, there might be cases in, in which what is seen in a pareidolia is something that shares some of its properties with uh, the thing that is actually that one is actually facing. I give you an example. Suppose this particular case in which, uh, in point of fact, uh, uh, you might say that in this case, uh, since what you grasp in this configuration is at least partially a sort of bear, you might say that what the bear does in what you uh, seem to see is that the bear is trying to grasp some other clouds. And in point of fact, the object that we are facing is just a conglomeration of clouds. So there is a special coincidence between the object that we are facing, that is an amount of clouds, and the alleged subject that we see in it that, so to speak, instantiates clouds in the scene that is, so to speak, presented. That there is a bear that tries to grasp clouds. Okay, but again, this would not be a problem. The problem would be, there would be a real problem only if there were a real collapse between both the accidental and the essential properties that are attributed both to the vehicle and to the subject, as in the case of Clyde. Okay, so, one might discard the third reason, but the point is that, according to me, the first two reasons actually work. Uh, the first two reasons that uh, Volheim provides. For, for instance, uh, uh, the second reason that says that uh, in the case of flag, uh, uh, is simply uh, we grasp something, uh, so to speak, as a whole, and uh, uh, this is not the case uh, for the uh, for the, the the scene in experience. For as Volheim says in the recognition of fold of a scene in experience, we see a scene, a scene that is constituted by the fact that some of its elements stand at least in a different spatial position with respect to some other of its, uh, of its elements. So he says, my perception is, uh, in one of his last papers, 2003, my perception is twofold in that I simultaneously am aware of the marked surface and experience something in front of behind something else. In this case that he had in mind, a woman in a hat standing in front of a clump of trees. And then in the uh, recognition of photo that experience, one cannot see just a single item in the picture as a whole, as in the experience of flag, as if the picture were cropped to this object, that is an, an item that occupies the whole of the pictorial space and one grasping the fold. One can only see a state of affairs, that is a complex scene, whose items stand between them in certain figure grand relations. This is what happens in a normal scene in experience. A scene in experience is a scene in experience in which the subject is not uh, something that, does, so to speak, occupies uh, uh, the space as a whole, because what you see is a scene constituted by different elements the stand uh, between together and together, at least in a spatial relation. And therefore, even the first reason, uh, according to which for Volheim, uh, the experience that we entertain when we see flag is not a scene in experience, holds as well, because it is not an experience of a particular. Uh, it is an experience, as I said, of a state of affairs in which the particular at most works as a certain constituent of the scene that we are uh, displacing. So all in all, because of the first and the second criterion, flag experience uh, is not a scene in experience, and therefore, if we accept uh, Volheim's criteria, flag is not a depiction. So Volheim would be right. There are two possible objections here. One that has been raised by Dom Lopez, in which Dom says, well, but look, uh, John's painting is affected by a special case of scene, he says. Namely, it is a case in which an illusionistic scene 
such as the one that occurs with genuine trompe-l'oeil, doubles, he says, with design scene, which is the perceptual grasping in the configuration and fold of the scene in experience of the design properties of the vehicle. That is, the properties that are responsible for the fact that the picture, uh, the picture subject is seen in the other fold of the experience in that vehicle. And basically, the design properties, as I say, are colors and shapes, but maybe they are not the only ones. Uh, but it seems to me that this uh, reply can be ruled out because, first of all, what Dom calls an illusionistic scene in is not seen in at all, as uh, Volheim already stressed in his book, Painting as an Art of 1987, because as an illusionistic scene in, in the sense of, 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 uh, of Lopez, is just a sort of a merely delusive experience. It's just an experience in which one mistakes a painting for something else, that is what is depicted in the painting. It's just an experience, for instance, when you mistake, in the famous Carneades example, you mistake a rope uh, for a snake, it's something like that. And this is not uh, a seeing experience uh, a, a, at all, right? Uh, and secondly, design seeing by itself prompts no seeing experience until the vehicle's properties that are grasped in it are seen in a more complex experiential, experiential scenario. And this scenario is exactly a proper seeing experience in which its configurational fault enables the picture subject to emerge in the vehicle, therefore to be seen it in the other fold of that experience. If we do not add the emergence factor, the fact that the vehicle merely contains properties that are responsible for the fact that something can be seen in the vehicle uh, does not manage to generate a proper seeing experience. And therefore, perceiving in flag's vehicle the colors that are also the colors of the American flag that one would see in the vehicle, if one might see it in this way at all, does not make it the case that such a flag is so seen, so it's not a seen in experience. My favorite example is always the Dalmatian. For I take it, uh, you know, anybody has a sort of paradigmatic case. This is my paradigmatic case. If you understand what happens here, you can understand whatever concerns the picture, according to me. Because in this case, this, why this case is so important for me? Because it's a case in which in two different temporal stages, you see what it normal happens all of a sudden as far as normal pictures are concerned, that is. You have a first moment in which you simply grasp uh, certain properties in the vehicle, which are precisely design properties. You can see space, uh, shapes, you can see colors, you here see simply black and white spots, okay? Uh, and those spots are definitely responsible for the fact that later in a proper scene in experience, we will see a Dalmatian in it. But by themselves, they are not enough. Why they are not enough? Because uh, something that enables uh, uh, the emergence of a Dalmatian must be added to this story. That is, one has to perceptually perform an operation of a, providing a sort of subjective contour here that enables you to single out a certain silhouette as standing in front of a certain background. If you are not able to see the vehicle this way by performing this sort of grouping operation on the vehicle, uh, you can't be able to also see in it a particular kind of dog, such as a Dalmatian. This is why, for me, the configurational fold uh, in the scene in experience do not, does not coincide with the experience of the vehicle taken in isolation. For the vehicle taken in isolation, is just the vehicle taken in its mere two-dimensional constitution. It does not involve this sort of extra operation that enable you to perform, to grasp a certain sort of depth relation between the elements of that constitute it. Uh, okay, maybe I can, because of lack of time. Sorry, Enrico, if you are there, and this is just <laughs> a fad. Uh, okay, just one thing, you know, here there's a case. 
Okay, let me skip all of that, Enrico, sorry if you are there, just because of sparing time. Okay, so, uh, well, uh, Enrico objection tried to show that there are, tries to show that there are cases in, in which we have uh, depictions, even though there is no proper scene in experience. And I make some tricks in order to show that this is not the case, but can put it apart. So let's pass on three flags. Because we now have all the ingredients that we need in order to say that when we are facing this sort of painting, unlike the original painting, uh, we are involved with a proper scene in experience. Why? Um, because see what is going to change here. The reasons why one cannot have a scene in experience with flag are precisely the very reason as to why, notwithstanding what Walton says on this concern, one can have this sort of experience, a proper scene in experience, with three flags. Why? Because in three flags, one perceives an American flag that partially occludes a different uh, flag, which in its own turn partially occludes another such flag. So what do we perceive in, in seeing three flags? Well, we precisely perceive a scene. A scene that is constituted by three elements that stand together in a certain spatial relation. It's a certain object that stands in front of another object by partially occluding it, that in its own turn stands in front of another object that is partially occluded by that. So in that case, one does not perceive a single item that stretches across the whole of the pictorial space, okay? Something like a flag as a whole, as in the original case with flag. So the second reason uh, that Walton, uh, that Volley mobilized does not apply here. And moreover, one perceives, as I say, a state of affairs, not a particular individual. It is a scene in which different characters, the three flag, stand in a spatial figure ground relation between each other. And therefore, we are in the conditions to say that this is a proper scene in experience in which we have a certain configuration unfold, in which we properly grasp a certain vehicle suitably adjusted, and in virtue of this adjustment, we manage to see in the recognition unfold a certain scene involving elements that stand together in a certain relation. And since, moreover, one is also taken to be an item in which one correctly see American flags one upon the other, uh, in Volheim's term, it is also a depiction of such flags, because according to Volheim, this is the correct things to be seen. We have to see some American flags put in this relationship. So we have a, a case, not only a case in which, uh, just like cases of uh, Pareto Lies, uh, in which we have cases of seen in experiences without depiction, but cases of seen in experiences that are accompanied or that surround a proper depiction. So conclusion, as a matter of fact, one can happily take flag to be ruled out from the realm of depictions, because at least in, in volumes terms, uh, is not flag is not surrounded by a proper scene in experience, but since, as you probably know, I am a sort of syncretist, I like, as any real Italian Catholic, I like compromises. So uh, I want to say that there are cases in which we might say that paintings of the same author, of the same painter, are real depictions because precisely uh, the criteria for something to be uh, first, uh, for something to be a scene in experience, and thereby also for something that is so experienced to be a picture of something else, are uh, satisfied, as in the case of three flags. Thank you.